Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Antonella Favit Van Pelt. Greetings, everyone. I am uh, uh, Helios Chief Medical Officer. I'm a practicing neurologist, and I have um, I welcome everybody to this uh, uh, interactions about Pons therapy. This is truly Carrie Walter's show because uh, she <laughs> is uh, our testimonial and a patient uh, with multiple sclerosis who has uh, gone through uh, an excursus and a journey with her disease, and uh, she's going to share with you her experience uh, with this new treatment. Um, I am going to introduce this treatment with a few slides just to let you know what this um, treatment is about. And uh, I'm going to just uh, put it in presentation mode and put this out. Okay, so PONS stands for Portable Neuromodulation, excuse me, neuromodulation Stimulator. And it's a neuromodulation therapy for people with multiple sclerosis. The uh, therapy has obtained breakthrough designation from uh, FDA in May 2020. And in March 2021, we received marketing authorization. And it's the only medical device cleared in the United States for the indication of short-term treatment of gait deficit in mild to moderate uh, multiple sclerosis and is uh, usually um, used uh, in adjunct to uh, physical therapy and uh, in adults, and it's um, available by prescriptions only. So the mechanism of action of uh, PONS therapy is uh, primarily based on uh, 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 stimulation and uh, translingual stimulation uh, that uh, 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 triggers activity um, process in uh, a specific part of the brain, specifically when you stimulate the, the tongue with the device, with the mouthpiece in the device, then he, uh, the stimulus goes through the tongue to the cerebellum and the brainstem. And from the brainstem goes to the, you know, to the, to the, to the uh, brain cortex, to specific areas of the brain cortex. And from there, it exerts uh, its activity through the corticospinal tract and therefore facilitates um, you know, the function of movement and balance. So I'm going to play a little video for you uh, that shows, uh, you know, uh, gives you a, an idea of uh, more specifically how the treatment is um, uh, works or is supposed to work. And uh, I'm going to stop because I don't think you can hear the audio. Uh, I have to do a little stuff, uh, little trick with my sharing. I have to allow the the, uh, the sound, so apologies for that. And uh, the sound, sound, and uh, here we go. The tongue is innervated by branches of the trigeminal and facial nerves with direct connections to the brainstem. Clinical evidence suggests that using PONS therapy, PONS device plus physical therapy, can induce neuromodulation effects by the translingual stimulation of the lingual nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve, and the corda tympani, a branch of the facial nerve. This stimulation promotes specific activation of targeted nerve centers in the brainstem and cerebellum which are associated with movement and balance. This process activates mechanisms responsible for neuromodulation of signaling pathways from and to specific areas of the cerebral cortex. Sustained neuromodulation by PONS-induced activation of these cortical areas is likely to trigger in these regions a series of adaptive changes through a process known as neuroplasticity. The neuroplastic process is expected to rehabilitate existing pathways 
as well as engage new mechanisms that can deliver functional signals to the spinal cord. Consistent and repeated application of pulse therapy over 14 weeks is likely to consolidate these functional compensatory pathways and potentially lead to a sustainable functional improvement over the 14-week treatment period. Okay, so let's see if I can uh, advance the slides. All right, so as you've seen from the, you know, from the previous um, slide, the device is uh, composed of um, uh, a controller that is worn around your neck and a mouthpiece that is uh, attached to the controller and can be activated from the controller and uh, delivers electricity, you know, a, a very mild electricity through, you know, to the top of your tongue. And you can actually control and adjust the intensity of this, uh, you know, electrical stimulation and that if it is at its maximum um, intensity, feels like uh, uh, carbonated water, like uh, fizzy water, you know, the hard soda, uh, or if you prefer champagne, so, and it's um, not an uncomfortable, and I will let Carrie speak to that, not an uncomfortable um, uh, sensation, but it can be adjusted to, um, you know, to individual comfort. So what is Pons therapy? Pons therapy is um, a treatment that consists of uh, physical rehabilitation and uh, by wearing Pons device. The recommended course of therapy is 14 weeks. Usually in line with the mechanism of action, um, the first two weeks are important in, in the therapy, in the course of the therapy, because during the first two weeks, um, it's, um, uh, 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 the device triggers a neuromodulation. So this neurotransstimulation that, in, that is applied to your tongue as we said, activate centers in the brain, in, in, in the brainstem and in the cerebellum. This activation triggers mechanism of what we call the neuromodulation. So neuromodulation is a process that allows the brain to respond to a stimulus and depending to which, you know, where it's applied and through which system, you know, it's delivered can stimulate, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, brain cortex and other structures in the brain to uh, perform, to send signals to perform a specific functions. In the case of people with gait function being gait, the impair function, this stimulation to the trigeminal and facial nerves help uh, uh, reach the targets in the brain that they can facilitate uh, uh, the signal being sent from the brain to your muscles. So the first two weeks are important in this uh, in this process because those are the weeks in which this neuromodulation is consistently applied, and start priming your brain, you know, with um, with uh, uh, the activity of sending signals to your muscles. But the importance of POMS therapy and this 14 weeks of, uh, of 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 therapy is that this neuromodulation, when it's applied consistently and repeatedly, triggers mechanism of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the mechanism that makes you learn about, uh, um, you know, uh, a function. So we have neuroplasticity, you know, in, every, in our day, every time, every day, when we want to learn something, when we want to consolidate a function, when we want to um, uh, uh, um, adapt to a situation, when we want to, even when we feel during our emotions and we, we have mood swings, all this is that function of neuromodulation. So, but, but, but neuroplasticity is, is only reached if you have a consistent uh, uh, stimulus, if you consistently apply the stimulus to your brain. So POMS therapy, the, after the first two weeks, uh, is recommended to be applied and continue to be applied for, for an additional, you know, uh, 
uh, 12 weeks. During these 12 weeks, uh, um, people perform the rehabilitation uh, and their physical therapy regularly, like as they've been trained uh, for during the first two weeks uh, with the physical therapist. And uh, um, during this additional 12 weeks, uh, um, uh, Patients uh, that are undergoing pulse therapy can touch base with their physical therapist uh, uh, regularly, either once a week or, you know, once every two weeks, according to what the therapist, you know, recommends. The physical therapy program is uh, um, often tailored based on the needs, uh, the individual needs of the patients. They obviously focus on, uh, you know, uh, on delivering exercises for gait and balance uh, because those are the functions that they want to be uh, that that uh, patients with this deficit need to rehabilitate. Um, the uh, what is important about pulse therapy is the dosing. We measure dosing by minutes, so we recommend that, that you know that uh, patients who undergo this therapy they have um, at least twenty minutes of uh, balance training and twenty minutes of gait training, and then uh, you know twenty minutes of what we call mindness mindful nest therapy. So it's a breathing and awareness relaxation uh, uh, time where um, the the brain consolidates uh, uh, the, uh, the the learning uh, through the balance and gait exercises. So we it's recommended uh, to you know to be performed uh, twice or three times a day, but at least uh, you know it, it's important to, to be consistent and repeat it and 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 uh, you know repeat the therapy um, for at least a hundred minutes a day for. Um, um, you know, daily, and you can actually have, you know, perhaps a day off on Sunday. But as long as you are, you know, applying it consistently, ideally for 100 minutes, but the most important part is the consistency. Is you have to be, you know, uh, uh, able to exercise with pawns daily for, you know, uh, as much, uh, as many minutes as, as possible based on this, on this uh, uh, therapy schedule. So um, the safety and efficacy of PONS were evaluated in two clinical studies and um, in a randomized control study, um, we have seen that 100% of the subjects that were randomized to the active PONS plus physical therapy experienced at least a four-point improvement in the dynamic gait index uh, uh, scale, So, which basically translates into a, a, a meaningful clinical improvement. And usually when we talk about a four-point improvement in DGI or an FG or, or a functional gait assessment, we're talking about a significant improvement between um, a, 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 the baseline degree of disability and a certain level of functional ability that you can reach after 14 weeks. So four points improvement in on average, it's, uh, it's always a very clinically meaningful improvement regardless of where the baseline of severity is you know, uh, 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 in a patient's uh, um, gait impairment. Another study is the Leonor study, and this is the study that I could, that has uh, provided the basis for, um, you know, for the mechanism of action. The, the study that has shown us and demonstrated uh, that POTS uh, 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 stimulation activates brain, uh, um, specific brain areas, like you've seen in, uh, in the previous uh, um, uh, video. We also have real world evidence and, um, you know, we've seen that uh, this uh, improvement, this four point improvement in the functional gait assessment, which is similar to the dynamic gait index, is um, consistently across, uh, you know, this 42 in uh, 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 patients with MS. And, um, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, almost 60% is a four point improvement with some patients, uh, you know, having improvement up to seven, you know, point uh, five points in their uh, uh, in their scoring, which means the difference between, for example, a patient being, you know, walking with poles, and then, uh, you know, transitioning from walking with poles to working with, you know, a cane, and and perhaps, you know, working without a, uh, walking without assistance. 
So um, there is no uh, uh, serious adverse events that were related to Pound's device uh, uh, reported in, um, you know, in in uh, uh, our clinical trials and uh, our even our post marketing uh, surveillance program is, uh, you know, has uh, been uh, uh, proven to uh, uh, to be consistent with the safety profile. Some individuals have reported headache, fatigue, and excess facility which is probably, you know, uh, um, related to the uh, salivation uh, that uh, occurs during training sessions when you put your when you wear your mouthpiece. Uh, other than that, the contraindications are pretty benign, and uh, obviously we want to use in case, you know with cautions in patients with pacemaker, defibrillators, the brain stimulators, and um, patients who have metals in the mouth or have been um, have a history of seizures and epilepsy. And with that, I just, um, you know, wanted to uh, leave you with a quote from Dr. Shatiwala, who is a physical therapist that um, has been uh, uh, using and, and treating patients with Pond's device and um, came uh, from a standpoint being a skeptical uh, <laughs> provider to uh, an enthusiastic uh, uh, provider. So, um, and I want at this point uh, introduce Carrie and uh, leave it to her. Great, thank you so much. So, um, thanks everyone for being here. It's always interesting to listen to the doctors. It just really kind of inspires me even more. Um, so I was diagnosed at an early age, I was 21. Um, so it's about 35 years ago. <laughs> um, and I was getting by with, but really having a lot of struggle walking and getting, being able to walk much distance before pawns, before I discovered pawns, which um, I learned about it from a random encounter. Um, I was in Portland, Oregon with my husband at a conference and um, Montel Williams was in the lobby and I, you know, walked over to him and he cl clearly recognized my situation was similar to his, but he had he had used the pawns. It was in an early, uh, like a study session or something. I'm not sure, but so I've been tracking it since 2017, watching um, the development and really just kind of keeping, getting news and updates from Helios. Um, and so when I learned about it, I encouraged physical therapists and I'm in Grants Pass, Oregon, and they've never heard of it. And I was like, that was the, you know, it's a critical and a required piece of this whole, um, training is working with a physical therapist. So um, I actually had two of them get trained. I worked with one primarily and they were amazed at my improvements. They, you know, they basically would I'd go in occasionally to work with them about once a week at the beginning and then not as much, but basically saying, well, you're doing all the work. I'm just watching you. I said, well, you're making sure I'm, you know, challenging myself enough, but I did do most of the work at home as we can talk about later um, if you have any questions. Um, so now I'm able, you know, the the big things, the little things are the big things. Um, being able to go on vacations um, without as much stress, go to concerts. My husband and I like to go to music concerts. Um, just things like in our town, we have a, I'm in a pretty small town, but being able to park further away and not just circle the block, trying to hope for that spot right in front of the store. Um, and he's comfortable taking walks, short walks with my dog or puppy that we're raising. Um, one incident that was kind of stood out, we were going on a vacation with um, actually my siblings and their spouses, and we're gonna go to Mexico. And I had, we had called ahead to let them know we we're bringing my scooter. And when we got there to check in at the gate, they said, well, two days ago or four days ago that these planes can no longer take scooters because they weren't um, fastened safe enough. And so things were getting damaged. and. I was just kind of standing there like, okay, now what? Um, so we decided to go without the scooter. And I don't know if, I don't know what I would have done with before ponds, but I wasn't panicking. Um, I had my walking sticks and I, you know, I was hopeful that when we got to the location that we could potentially rent one um, because we were going to a pretty large, uh, you know, like a resort that I had never experienced. So anyway, we, you know, I just felt I had that 
kind of boost that I'm like, okay, well, we're just going to do this and hope for the best. Um, I'm able to navigate a different terrain um, without as much um, concern, I guess would be the word. Um, it's We do live in a town where there's a restaurant we go out to. It has a three-tiered deck on the Rogue River. It's really beautiful. And um, there's a man there that plays music. And there was one point um, a few months back that he just kind of stopped his guitar and said, what's happening with you? You're walking so much. I'm sure he's watched me go down those stairs before wondering. <laughs> um, so little moments like that are just really stand out. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, my treadmill speed at the beginning was uh, 1.3. And there is actually a video, a comparison video of me on the Pond's website if you want to check that out sometime. Um, and then I was able to, after the, basically towards the end of the Pond's, I would slowly increase, you know, of course, over the weeks. But at the end, I was at 2.6. Um, so basically doubled my pace and I could do a slight incline, which was kind of a big deal. Um, you know, so MS will always be a part of me. Um, it's been a part of me for, my, my MS is, my doctor calls it, how old is your MS? So it's 35. Um, but PONS, you know, it's a it's a big time commitment and, um, but it's so worth it. I mean, I, I can't even imagine going backwards. Um, so it's a big time commitment, but, but as you see improvements really, really at the beginning, you just have that motivation. You gotta keep going, right? Um, I've always been, pretty into fitness. And I think that's actually been a good thing for my MS, um, kind of hindsight. But this, you know, the results just kept me motivated. Uh, I have a good friend who might be on this call, actually. Um, and she started using it. And she said, you know, it's not a marathon. It is a marathon. <laughs> it's not a sprint. Um, so I, that's kind of my story. Um, happy to answer. You know, they'll be having questions and question and answer period, but yeah, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you so much, Carrie. Really appreciate you coming on and, and uh, obviously sharing your story. <laughs> I'm always thrilled to, to hear from you. Um, and then of course, uh, to Dr. Angela from Mutant Pelt, just for covering um, ponds for us. Um, at this point, we are going to open the floor to any questions that anybody has. Um, you can do so via um, the, the chat feature, just uh, simply uh, enter your question in. Um, if you are having issues with that, um, there is an option on Teams to just raise your hand. Um, if you want to just raise your hand, we will get to you. Um, but uh, if you can, please utilize the, the chat feature um, for any questions you may have. Sorry, Siri had a question. Hang on one second. Okay, um, Dr. Faisal Zadi, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct. You should be able to unmute. Not sure if you can hear me. Your mic is available if you just want to um, uh, allow, uh, I'm sorry, uh, unmute yourself. Maybe we're having some issues still. Give it a try here in another second. Um, if there are any questions though, please do put them in the chat. Um, for for any present uh, either our presenters or of course just in general um, uh, to the the pawns team here. Um, I'm gonna turn off your mic again and we'll try it again. One second. Okay, you want to try it one more time to see if you can unmute. Okay, well, we're trying to work out that technical issue. Um, Antonella, is there an ongoing process to approve and distribute pond oh, in Europe, Spain in particular? Antonella, if you want to just go over our uh, the, the the authorization or in in Europe. 
No, there or is rather no... our lack of. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. There is not authorized. There is no authorization in yeah. uh, uh, any country other than the United States and Canada for multiple sclerosis. Um, we do have authorization in Canada for um, traumatic brain in injury and stroke, but in the United States, uh, we only authorized for MS, and we do actually have a breakthrough therapy designation for stroke, and we are, on, you know, we have a, a registrational program ongoing right now to get market authorization um, in the future. But we're and we also have a market authorization in Australia for gait and balance deficit, but nowhere else. Yes, thank you. Um, to Carrie, have you noticed any of the lingering benefits from ponds? I read that many users can no longer can no longer, I guess, go periods without therapy, but the continuous nature of MS makes me think that you would not see so much of the lingering benefits. Oh, uh, the benefits have stayed with me. Um, there's it hasn't been any going back to where I was. Um, so I don't know where you might have, you know, maybe read that, but. Yeah, with pawns, it's not um, it's not like a physical therapy where you certainly we get benefit from a you know the training, but as um, you know, Dr. Van Pelt, basically we're changing our brains, um, and I don't want to get to <laughs> that's her specialty. I have my speech <laughs> or my, but yeah, it's not we're not going back. <laughs> so I don't know if that answers it, but. Um, Yes, I mean, I think, uh, Carrie, that, that is actually a very good point that you bring. So we have data um, that uh, takes us to 14 weeks of therapy. But there is one point in our clinical trials that is very important. When we look at the uh, comparison between uh, people who have um, who were randomized to the control group, which means the people who did the same you know, physical therapy, but with a sham device, with an inactive device, versus people who, you know, uh, were uh, randomized to the active devices. What we've seen is that, you know, during the first uh, two weeks, uh, and actually during the first, uh, you know, eight weeks, uh, both group, uh, group uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, an improvement by the physical therapy. Obviously, the improvement with the pawns was greater than the improvement of uh, the folks who were in, um, you know, in in the in the control group. But where it became different is that at some point, the people with, uh, you know, with uh, in the control group or with physical therapy had, uh, you know. To a certain extent, a meaningful improvement, but then you know they they reached their plateau, and after ten weeks they started to decline. So physical therapy, it improve it it triggers a benefit, a clinical benefit by neuromodulation, right? But it's an input, right? But unfortunately, this neuromodulation is not enough to make the brain learn to use a compensatory pathway, which is what happens with PONS. Because with PONS, what we've seen is that patients continually improved and all the patients had, as I said, more than four points improvement with an average of seven, almost eight points, 7.93 improvement. And what is really important is a 10 weeks mark when the patients in the control group declined, the patients with PONS therapy stayed consistent. No, they reached their 7.393 improvement and they maintained it for the additional four weeks. So this is, uh, obviously I cannot speak to data past that because we don't have them yet. We, ha we now have a trial ongoing, which is called PONSTEP, that is looking also you know, at the benefit of what happens after, you know, you stop, uh, you know, the, the four weeks. But if you look at the mechanism of action, as I have explained it to you, is that you have the first two weeks and where you induce neuromodulation, you continue to use it. So you continue to improve right to a point where you reach a plateau and you maintain that you know, over the 14 weeks, uh, you know, period. So that's what care is referring to, is referring to the possibility of your brain having learned to use this new, you know, pathways, right, that deliver the signal to your muscles. 
And I think we do still have a question for Dr. Farid, but I'm not yeah. sure that he, yeah. Yeah, hang on one second. Um, we we're gonna try to unmute again. Okay, can you unmute yourself now? There we go. Do you, do you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, and sorry about that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, um, Dr. Ferret Wimpel, and and thanks, Gary, um, uh, for that uh, very emotional story, um, and all the best for you. you. Um, I have two questions. Uh, um, uh, just a little in introduction, uh, where I am not the patient, uh, but I'm a neuromodulation scientist with over 30, 30 years of uh, neuromodulation career. I had spent coincidentally 10 years uh, in mapping the neuro neuronal connectivities of of the oral cavity, uh, particularly the tongue, both uh, somatosensory and chemosensory pathways. So um, uh, my first question is uh, with regards to the therapy. Can this therapy be, uh, does this therapy work in the absence of, uh, uh, of the exercise regime, uh, motor rehab? Uh, I know I understand how LTP works, uh, but then uh, does it work in the absence, particularly for the patients who, who, who cannot walk, for example? So the, the answer to your question is that we have not studied uh, Pons therapy without physical exercise from the beginning, you know, at the beginning of uh, when when this therapy was were, was first developed. So when the device was first, um, you know, uh, tested, it was also also always tested uh, um, with the intent of um, uh, assessing a motor function. Now, mechanistically, one would. Uh, uh, as, uh, perhaps a postulate that um, uh, uh, stimulation, uh, electric stimulation of the trigeminal vestibular pathways um, would uh, uh, trigger uh, uh, activation of uh, uh, cortical areas. The question is, uh, would uh, this stimulation uh, trigger the same uh, cortical areas that you know that that they, that it activates during rehabilitation or not? So that's why I cannot answer your question. Is that on paper? Uh, theoretically, yes. I mean that, that I'm fairly comfortable to say that if you have a persistent stim, you know, near stimulation of the tongue and therefore activation of trigeminal vestibular pathways, yes, you would have activation of cortical regions. The question is, I'm not sure whether they're the same and whether you could uh, extrapolate that, for example, the activation in the anterior cingulate cortex, which is, uh, as you know, you know, an area that tend to, you know, to cognition would still be um, present if you do not do rehabilitation. And that I don't have the data to support that. No, that's fair enough. Um, uh, but yeah, um, potentially I can see there would be interaction, but may not be to the extent that it will show it will show uh, remarkable results. Uh, my second question is around. Uh, uh, so so this so there's a lot of things happening in the pontine medullary area where uh, these lingual and facial nerve uh, centers are. Uh, they interact uh, particularly through the reticular formation uh, or nucleus of solitary mm -hmm. tract. Um, so, and that area, no doubt, is related to cerebellar, uh, 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 related to gait and uh, motor uh, functions. Uh, but also, that area is very richly related. And I found this in from my work where I had used transsynaptic uh, rabies viruses to label the to label the uh, tongue birds and see where they end up. So they they ended up in all the places. There's a place. There's a they they interact. I've seen them interacting uh, at in the, at the level of RF uh, with the uh, with the with the with the nerve fibers with the with the neurons that are uh, that are uh, affecting memory, for example, or that are linked to uh, 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 hippocampus uh, for for depression, for example, uh, or, or 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 the pain. 
So uh, these are the things I mean, and my question is, did you guys looked into uh, those aspects um, of, uh, of your therapy? So we have uh, real world uh, evidence data um, and we, you know, in, a, in our uh, collection of data, we do have multiple endpoints. The challenge that I have in answering your question directly is that we do not have uh, claims for it. So we're not authorized because we have not studied um, uh, uh, in, in randomized control trials. Um, there's other endpoints, there's other outcomes. Um, so I can tell you that um, the you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, the uh, 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 trigeminal facial trigeminal pathways with direct correlation to uh, both the pons, the medulla, the pons, and uh, you know, and the trigeminal vestibular trigeminal nuclei in the cerebellum yep. do activate reticular formation and do have projection to the subthalamic and thalamic region, which uh, then projects it to you know the hippocampus mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know the 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 um, entorhinal cortex. So mechanistically, there is a but it's it's possible to postulate you know an effect on uh, again on on uh, learning, uh, an effect on mood, an effect on sleep. So I would say we don't have data, so I cannot comment as to the outcome. But um, you know that there's. Um, there's a very likelihood that this, uh, you know, the patients uh, who consistently use pawns uh, uh, would, um, you know, would have um, uh, uh, what do we call satellite benefits. And I'm yeah. not going to quantify it or or de define which one mm -hmm. those are. No. Yeah, no, no, uh, I understand that. Uh, and lastly, uh, the role of hypoglossal nerve, even though it's a purely a motor nerve. There are sensory fibers. Okay, uh, there is a literature uh, suggesting between two to six percent of sensory fibers. Not only that, but there is ton of antidromic stimulation when you stimulate the tongue, going up through the hypoglossal nerve. Okay, and uh, I don't see that um, uh, being discussed. Uh, uh, because. So, mm -hmm. Because we do not engage the apoglossal nerve. And the reason is because we um, stimulate our device is uh, is uh, structured and designed in a way that it stimulates uh, sensory motor fibers uh, from the facial nerve and the corda tympani, which is in a specific layer of the tongue is between the 300 and 400 micrometers I see. of the tongue. And those fibers uh, are uniquely projecting into, as I mentioned, the trigeminal uh, nuclei and the vestibular nuclei. And they do not, you know, uh, uh, cross uh, interact with the hypoglossal nerve oh, fibers. That's interesting. Okay, I didn't know the depth of stimulation, but it looks like you are very superficial. Uh, but but yeah, in my experience in past, I have seen uh, 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 when we were doing hypoglossal nerve stimulation uh, as a side effect. I mean, I would say a good side effect. We have seen the patients feeling reported a feeling of, I, you know, uh, I know. good feeling, et cetera, et cetera. So there's something, even though it is purely a motor nerve, but the but the sensory portion of it is is doing something that we do not know biologically. But we do have imaging data that shows that we do not activate or engage the epiglossal yeah. nerve. No. So okay. I can Makes tell sense. you for a fact that we Makes have sense. imaging data that you know that that makes us feel very comfortable that we do not interact with that function. Makes sense. I can I can keep on talking about on this topic, <laughs> but I want to stop here. Uh, thank you very much. I do not want to take others time. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing and uh, I, I just love it. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, sorry, just a couple of questions here. Just trying to get the chat here. Um, uh, sorry, uh, I think Dave uh, regarding insurance. Um, so we are currently um, engaged with CMS. We do not have uh, any coverage yet, uh, but we are engaged with CMS and we do anticipate um, receiving our HCPCS codes uh, a little bit later on this year. 
uh, with the hope that we'll get broad coverage uh, middle to late 2024. Um, Helios is also engaging with commercial and private payers. Um, so I would say if you currently have coverage by a commercial or private payer, we would invite you to speak directly with the team to discuss possible options. Um, so again, working, um, you know, Helios is working on both fronts and certainly welcome you to, uh, to, to reach out and we can have specific conversations regarding your insurance. Um, I think there was a question um, about a location in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, there is a clinic. It is Horizon Rehabilitation. I will drop that information in the chat. Um, another question just regarding um, Yuri Daniloff and Mitch Tyler. Um, I believe you're referring to the, the lab, University of Wisconsin. Obviously, that is where the device kind of came out of. <laughs> um, so that's where a lot of this research took place. Um, so, so yes, yeah, certainly is a, an association there as the device was um, was kind of born there, I guess I'll say. <laughs> Um, it, um, it's uh, just a follow up question here on on Europe. I'm not sure if we can comment any point here on the, the timeline, um, but just asking um, when pawns might arrive in Europe um, and then. Um, right. Yeah, right now we do not have uh, uh, a time frame. Um, we don't anticipate that to, to be happening in the nearest future. And I couldn't possibly comment on uh, or, or, or give, uh, you know, a, a time frame for that. Uh, pricing question. Um, so uh, there is a prepaid uh, cash discount price of $14,500, uh, which is discounted from the list price of $25,700. Um, but again, as I just uh, mentioned, we are working, of course, um, with, uh, with CMS and with those private and commercial payers. Um, so certainly do encourage you to reach out and speak to us directly. Um, there could also be opportunities um, for some grants with, you know, possibly the National MS Society um, or financing. So, so please do reach out to us um, and we can certainly discuss those options. How do I become a registered therapist to use this in Australia? Um, so uh, while we do have um, that, that indication in Australia, we are not commercial in Australia at this point. Um, so I'm not able to provide any information um, at this time. Um, I believe, Matilda, we do have your information, so um, we'll certainly keep that. Um, but again, at this time, we are not commercial in Australia. Checking to see if we missed any others. And again, if you're having issues with the chat, feel free to raise your hand and we'll get to you. I'm just going to give it another minute or two in case anybody's typing up a question here. And I am going to put the information for Horizon Rehab in the chat as well. There could be one more question coming in, so just bear with us here for a second. Have you had any potential issues with the FDA for future approvals? Um, I'm not well, sure. I'm not sure what, what I'm not sure what this question, you know, uh, is in reference to. What I could say to you is that right now we are uh, currently speaking with FDA about our breakthrough designation for stroke, and our experience and our interaction with FDA has been overwhelmingly positive. So the, the 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 team at the agency, the review team at the agency, uh, has been uh, uh, engaging with us, and we've been engaging with them very uh, positively. They have, um, you know, a high regard for our therapy, and uh, they've been very uh, useful in uh, in providing guidance. OK, and then I, I'm also going to drop in our email address and our phone number as well. Um, so certainly reach out if there's any additional questions or, or anything that comes up. Um, please do email us or give us a call. OK, Carrie Antonella, anything else that you want to add? I don't think so. I'm available if people wanted to contact me at some point through Michelle. You wanted to talk. 
separately. Likewise, I'm available to provide any information, you know, if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about the therapy, the mechanism of action, how it's been used, uh, the rehabilitation program, and as well as to how to become a PONS therapist or how to talk to your therapist to become a PONS trainer. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. If there's no other questions, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your uh, your day. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, and Sim. Bye. Okay.